Um, first thing I am going to have a go at is trying to set the um, console font to see if we make it bigger so it's a bit easier to read on the video. So I'm actually jumping to 9.6 in the book, um, even though I've got some stuff to do in 9.5. Um, so what I'm going to do is just look to see, check the location of the fonts in user share console fonts. So I obviously set the one uh, that they used in the book, which was lat 2 dash terminus 16. Now the fact that it's 16 means that it's probably 16 pixels high, which is quite small. So I'm looking for something that's a lot bigger, like either this Sun 12 by 22 or this Solar 24 by 32. Now some of the really big ones can be too big and they won't actually uh, be rendered correctly or, or won't be used at all because there's some problem with them. Maybe they don't fit in the screen properly. You know, um, the dimensions aren't exact. So what I shall do is I'm going to try the smaller of these two and see what that's like, which is this Sun 12 by 22. So I need to edit etc vconsole.conf and it's called sun 12 x 22 so sun 12 x 22 I'll save that and I'm going to cap that file and just compare it visually to make sure I've spelt it right sun 12 x 22 so what I'm going to do now is to reboot and see if that improves the size of the font um, and see what it's like if it's still if it's worked that's good um, if it's still a bit small I'm going to try the other one with the larger size uh, see, oh, that's not too bad so if the one with the larger size which I'll try next doesn't work then I can fall back to this one it's a bit more reasonable even for my eyes on the on the monitor to see so let's Log in again and recall, and I need to change it to Solar 24x32. Solar, Solar 24x32 without the E. So I'll list those fonts again, just cat that file. It's over here now, the font uh, 24 by 32. So that looks OK. So again, I'm going to reboot, to see what that looks like. And this tends to be a bit of trial and error with the fonts. They seem to change each release, like the Terminus font, which I use regularly, was not there. Oh, OK, yeah, that is big, but it's way too big, actually. So ideally, I need something between um, what was it, twenty-two and thirty-two, maybe like twenty-four or twenty-six, twenty-eight, something like that. So let's see what else is in that directory. Uh, let's try something with twenty-four in it. Okay, that's the wrong dimension. I need something that says X twenty-four. There isn't anything, obviously. 26, 28, uh, 28. No, that 28 is in the wrong dimension. Let's try. Well, 30 is going to be getting too big. So I think I'm going to have to stick with that 22 one. Let's have a look at the 22s. So yeah, all those ones there are the same size. So I think I'm just going to go back to the sun. I think I might try the ISO 01 maybe. That might have might be more accurate um, in terms of the characters that are available. So ISO 01-12x22. ISO 01-12x22. ISO 
so O1-12 by 22. So I'll just list them up again and cat the V console to make sure I've spelt it correctly. Yep, that looks okay. So I'll quit and reboot once more. There's obviously a compromise on the amount of information you can display on the screen at once. Obviously, if it's too big, you can only see so much at once. Um, obviously, if it's too small, it's hard to read. Okay, so it looks quite reasonable. I'll just test the right. The characters aren't working, so the keyboard's not been set up right. So that's something else I need to check as well. And I'll do that next, actually, because obviously I might need some of these special characters, and if I'm typing the wrong characters and not checking, then it's going to cause a problem. So one of the problems was that I couldn't run the locale control program um uh but now I should be able to so let's see what the, the notes say about that you can change the key map value at runtime by using the local ctl utility local ctl set key map with the map um you can also also use the locale ctl utility with the corresponding parameters to change the x11 keyboard layout model variant and options And to list the possible values, do local CTL, so locale, CTL, key map models. Oh, list, sorry, list. Let's see what else we've got here. Oh, these are Frex 11. No, the command's not found for some reason. Oh, locale, right, I see, locale, CTL with that parameter. So, locale, CTL, let's try it on its own. So it's telling us the language is ENGB ISO 88591, so that's okay. The virtual console key has been unset, and so is the X11. Let's try help. So let's try list key maps to see what's available. Okay, so... So there's EN and EN Latin. So there's one there called UK. So I'm going to attempt to use that one. Um, I imagine it's going to be United Kingdom. So I need to locale set hyphen key map space uk so now if i press the hash i'll get the hash the pound i'll get the pound dollar and the quotes and that sign so that's obviously worked um so i need to change the v console comp file i presume to make that permanent so i tried Okay, looks like it's added some more stuff in here. Oh, it's actually changed it for me. Okay, so that's good. So I had GB there before, and that's obviously the wrong one. And it's actually also set the X11 settings as well for me. So that's good. So there's no further changes there. So that should be it for the console. Um, now, usually in the System V instructions, the console configuration file is where you control the uh, kernel logging and the amount of output it puts out. And there's no mention here 
about the kernel um, logging so I'm gonna have to try and let's go and look at the no chunks version and see if I can find out if that's in the book at all let's go to the end Okay, just trying to find Oh, I've gone to the wrong one. I'm on the Sysphere net one. Um system download system date. Right, system configuration. Right, just got to try and find it. There's 265 matches for kernel. No, it doesn't look like there's anything without spending more time looking for the kernel uh, messages level. Um, I'm not sure what it would be to set that on system day. I'd have to do some research about that. Okay, so I'll have to leave that for now. Um, so the console, it looks like is complete. I'll just quickly scan down the page to see if there's anything else that needs to be set there. No, looks like that's done then. So I'm going to go back now to 9.5, which is configuring the system clock. And it was a bit confusing because it seemed to assume that um, if there's no difference in time on the system, which is currently 15.26, and that is the real time here, it suggested that if there's no difference that you're on local time, um, which might not necessarily be the case uh, in the UK. It's GMT, which is local time, and GMT time, or or UTC time, they're actually aligned during the winter months. So um, it's a bit misleading to say that if they're the same, um, that you're on local time. Um, and in the book, it says to create an ETC ADJ TIME file with the following contents if your hardware clock is set to local time. Um, so arguably, the hardware clock is not set to local time because there's no reason for it to be. Um, there's no windows being shared on the system, which if it was, then I would expect the timer to be 
set to local time because that's how Windows uses it. But being as it's just Linux on this system, the time can be set at uh, UTC or GMT time. So if it says if ETC ADJ time isn't present at first boot, system D time date D will assume the hardware clock is set to UTC and adjust the file according to that. Okay, so because I've booted without that file, it's um, created its own one by the looks of it. So if I, uh, no, it hasn't actually. It says adjust the file. If it isn't present the first boot, system D time date D will assume the hardware clock is set to UTC and adjust the file according to that. Um, well, no, it hasn't adjusted the file because it doesn't actually exist there. Um, but now we've, we're able, we'll look at it after running this command. It says you can use time date CTL utility to tell system D time date D if your hardware clock is set to UTC or local time. So let's, this is what I couldn't do before. So let's do time date CTL. And it tells us that local time is um, 1529 GMT, which is correct. Universal time is the same, which is UTC, which is the same as GMT. And the real time clock is set to the same time. So that all looks good at the moment. Um, but it says the real time clock is in the local time zone. No, so that's probably not right. So let's do set local RTC option, which it says in the book. Set local RTC. Now it says you can use the utility to tell system D time date that if your hardware clock is set to UTC or local time. And then it says the example is to um, set it to one, but it doesn't say what one does. It doesn't say it sets it to local or UTC time. So I think I'm going to do a help here to see if there's any information. Uh, set local. All oh, right, set local RTC. Control whether the RTC is in local time. Okay, so the one, if it's a Boolean value here, based on what that says there, would mean that a one would indicate it's set to local time. So I want to set it to UTC time. So I need to do set local RTC zero. Now if I do time date control on its own, um, it looks like nothing's changed actually, so maybe the default that's occurred was uh, sufficient. Uh, maybe this RTC in local time zone is not, not relevant in this case. Okay, so the book then tells you how to change your current system time. I'm not going to do that because it's accurate. Also, you can see it says the NTP service is active. It's obviously contacted my time server. To change your current time zone, it tells you how to do that. I don't need to do that. And you can do time date, CTO, list time zones to obviously list the time zones if you wish to. Zones. So yeah, there's loads of them there. I'm not going to look at all of that. Uh, network time synchronization. So I presume it's working. Let's do system control. Is that all right? Crikey. Um System D time sync D is what I want to look for. There it is there. Time sync D service. Yeah, active and running. Network time synchronization. So it is actually running. So that's why the time's accurate. And it's probably why the time zone and um, everything else is set up correctly. It's, it's got that information from the... Uh, NTP server, I guess. Um, it says when the system clock is set to local time, 
oh hang on the etc system d time sync d comp file can be used to change the ntp servers yes I, I i edited that so i'll just show you that again etc system d time sync d dot conf now if you remember i put my time server in here so you could put any public time server there please note that when the system clock is set to local time time sync d won't up, update the hardware clock okay that makes sense because i think normally it's kept in utc so i'm still not completely happy that's been configured correctly but at the moment it looks right i guess the only way i could tell for sure that it was working correctly is when we go into british summer time and the times uh changes go forward an hour um, to see that that works correctly so i'll just skip through this to see if there's anything else to set. we've done the linux console uh, we've done the locale I think that's all okay. The only other thing was the network wasn't completely working correctly. So let's just check through here. So ETC resolve comp, that's the thing that was wrong or looked wrong. Yeah, the name server's wrong. Um, I presume that's a local name server because it starts with 127. So... It looks like I can't see anything that says how to set that and there's no reason why I can't understand the reason why it's come up with that name server there or where it's got that from. Let's see what it says there. Let's follow this for the configure search domains. Okay, resolve CTR status. Resolve with an E. Yeah, so this is my time server and it's using these global ones with the looks of it. Okay, third party program should not access follow up through a sim link. Um, so I'm just reading what it says about the ETC resolve comp file. It says if the system is going to be connected to the internet, it will need, need some means of domain name service, name resolutions, resolve internet domain names to IP addresses and vice versa. This is best achieved by play, placing the IP address of the DNS server available from the ISP or network administrator into ETC resolve conf. Uh, if using methods incompatible with system D, resolve D to configure your network in, interfaces or if using any type of local resolver or any other software that generates a etc resolve.conf the system d resolve d service should not be used and should be disabled when using system d resolve d for dns configuration it creates a file run system d resolve stub d resolve.conf and if etc resolve.conf does not exist it will be created by System D resolve D is a sim link to stub resolve.com, so it's unnecessary to create 
btcresolve.conf manually. And it says about creating static resolve.conf, which is what I might have to do. Um, yeah, there's no other information about how to configure that name server that it's found from somewhere. Um, let's see if we can find out about that IP address, if it's just a standard catch-all or something. 127.0.0.53. So why does, on the stack exchange, it says, why does etc resolve, etc resolve.conf point at 127.0.0.53. And it says you're likely running systemd resolve D. And the stub resolve.conf tells DNS client library to send the queries to 127.0.0.53. This is where the system do resolve D process listens for DNS queries, which it then forwards on. Um, there's a load more information there. And it's talking a lot about DHCP. Yeah, so that's a lot of information to take in at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, change this to a static resolve.conf. So I'm going to have to do systemctl. System CTL dis disable. Oh dear, I can't type now. Disable system D resolve D. And now I'm going to have to edit the resolve.conf. In fact, it's going to be a symlink probably still, is it? Yes, it is. So I'll have to remove that, then edit the file and create it manually. So basically I can put in the domain, which is my net.org and then name server 192.168.0.8. Save that. So what I'm going to do now is to reboot to make sure that it doesn't get overwritten. So I'll log in. I'll just look at that. Resolve file and yes it stayed the same so now if I ping my name server that's working and if I ping uh, Linux from scratch for example org that should work now and it does uh, no it's not working for some reason um, Right, is that because I've... Oh, they might not be accepting pings, actually. Um, let's try... Um, uh, kernel.org. Oops. So it says unknown host. It's obviously tr contacting the name server. Yes, it is working. Uh, so it could be that Linux from scratch won't accept, accept pings. And maybe, maybe the external name service was working. Um, let's try turning the resolver back on. This might write, overwrite my changes. So that's still there. Let's reboot. It may be that it sees as a resolve there now and it uses it anyway, regardless of the fact that the um, resolve service is 
been started or enabled. Oh, it might just go and overwrite it again. No, it's kept it anyway. Okay, I'm not sure what to do with that actually. I'll probably leave it as it is, it's working, so that's good enough. Um, so that's the configuration done. The only other thing to do was on the Grub setup process. Um, if I type in EFI boot manager, you'll remember where there's all these other entries here. Uh, which effectively don't exist. The only one that's valid now is number two. Looks like the Windows one's gone. Um, in fact, it looks like there might be other entries that have been added that are probably valid. Uh, so this is probably dynamic. Um, and it's picked up the OS which is the Linux from Scratch OS, I'll oh, go to the default uh, boot here, five file by the looks of it. Um, Uh, right, let's see where we were. Configurable. Yeah, it looks like actually this is probably okay as it is not the sp automatic during boot minimal configuration with boot okay Oh yes, this was it. Setting up the configuration on UEF, UEF. We've we've done the minimal boot configuration, but there was another configuration setting up uh, for UEFI based systems grub works by installing an EFI application um, with a, an identifier, um, which is the mount point of the ESP and ID is replaced with an identifier specified in the grub install command line. So I was going to try this method now to see what effect that had. So what I'm going to do is to run grub install. Um, I probably have to mount boot actually first of all. Mount boot and EFI and then run grub install dash dash boot loader equal uh, ID equals LFS dash dash recheck so that's worked then it says issue EFI boot manager cut minus F1 and Yes, what it's done, you can see it's put LFS as the primary uh, boot now. It's removed it from two and made it the primary boot. Um, and it's still got this access to the OS that's on here. And then you've got a CD drive option, which although I don't think this machine's got a CD drive on it, a uh, removable device will be like USBs and then network device, assuming that the network is bootable as well. So, in theory, if I log out of this, this should still boot.
Yep, it's booted fine. There's the grub menu. If I press enter, it's booting. So that's okay. So really the only thing I would need to spend some time on researching is to, well, confirm exactly how the network resolution works, whether that would have worked without my modifications. Um, and the other thing is these console messages, how to control that, how to manage that easily through system D. Um, I don't know actually if I could disable this. Go into etc. Rename resolve.conf to just move that out of the way, then re enable system D resolve D. And let's do another reboot to see if that would set up that resolve.conf again as it was originally. Yes, it has set it up. So I'm going to try and ping. Which one did I do last time? Kernel.org. Oh, yes, it is working. So it did work as it was. I didn't need to make any changes. It's just because the Linux from scratch uh, URL is not taking any ping requests. So that's fine. So, yeah, that seems to be it then. It's it's just literally the console, command, uh, console output from the kernel, the... Uh, status messages that appear appear on the boot okay well i've just uh, found out a way of getting rid of those kernel messages and it's to um, actually send um, the print k level to the kernel and this can be done easily with um, a file in sys control D at startup. So I've created this file. It can be obviously called anything. I've called it level 20. So it gets done fairly early on. Set print K to level 3. And basically, the default, I believe, is level 4, which tells the kernel to issue uh, anything that's serious up to a warning. Um, and anything above that is like notices, info and debugging so it doesn't normally issue them but by setting it to three it's telling it not to issue the warning conditions because that's above level three so that's what we were seeing so what the kernel will still issue messages about is error conditions critical conditions um, and anything of a higher priority than that so inside that file all i've done is added the following Pre kernel dot print k equals and then three space three space three space three and that was the um, resolution as you can see on the screen it's booted up nice and cleanly with the um, startup messages so if I just boot up again And as you can see, the boot up screen is a lot cleaner. There's no messages appearing in between the status messages there. And there's no messages appearing after the logon at all. So that's all fine.